Astronaut Bobby Collins stumbled out of his shattered cryopod naked, half-starved, and reeking like a corpse, shocking the blue-skinned Benzite aliens crowded around him. Their laser guns and electric spears aimed at Collins, primed to blast his scrawny human body back to the Stone Age. To identify yourself, why have you violated the sovereign territory of the Benzite Dominion? The lead alien, Commander Belos, demanded as his weapon's power cell whined. Collins blinked at the harsh light, his mind fogged and confused. Just seconds ago, he'd been strapped in the Odyssey for humanity's first manned extrasolar mission, but according to his onboard AI, that was over 10,000 years ago. A critical malfunction had knocked him into a cryo-sleep while his ship drifted off course and eventually crashed here, on this alien planet, swarming with pissed-off Benzites. And boy, were they pissed. Collins could barely get a word in before they started jabbing him with the butts of their spears, herding him out of the ship. All his equipment was still on board, his spacesuit, rifle, translator. He was defenseless. A quick glance at the landscape revealed he was far, far from home. Bioluminescent plants cast an eerie glow. Giant crystal spires towered overhead, and his ship crashed half-buried in pink sand dunes. He was so utterly screwed. I come in peace, Collins shouted, his voice raspy from centuries of disuse. My name is Bobby Collins. I'm an astronaut from Earth. My ship malfunctioned, and I've been asleep for over 10,000 years. I didn't mean to trespass. Lies, Belos said, his teeth flashing. You're an infiltrator sent to spy on us. There's no intelligent life on Earth, just radioactive ruins. What? No, that's impossible. Earth couldn't be gone. His family, his little daughter, Cindy. They had to be waiting for him. The AI must have it wrong. He had to get home, had to escape these violent aliens and find his way back. But outnumbered, outgunned, and lost in an uncharted galaxy, Bobby Collins would need every ounce of human grit and ingenuity to survive. And if he couldn't get back to warn Earth about the hostile life that lurked among the stars, humanity might face a threat greater than extinction. Ten thousand years of progress wiped out in an instant, and no one would ever know why. Dozens of Benzite soldiers materialized out of the shadows, their electric spears and laser guns aimed squarely at Collins. Commander Balos barked orders in an alien tongue as the troops took up flanking positions, surrounding the human on all sides. They were coming with us for interrogation, spy, Balos snarled. Your trespassing will not go unpunished. Guards seize him. The soldiers advanced cautiously, spear tips crackling with energy. Colin's heart hammered in his chest as he realized he was moments away from being captured or killed. His eyes darted around, searching for an escape, but there was nowhere to run. In a flash of desperate inspiration, Collins remembered his plasma rifle, still strapped to his back from the Odyssey. It was a long shot, but it might just shock the Benzites enough to buy him a chance. In one fluid motion, he drew the weapon and aimed it at a towering crystal spire. The rifle whined as it charged up, then unleashed a searing bolt of plasma. The blast struck the spire dead center. For a split second, nothing happened. Then the entire structure detonated in a blinding flash, raining molten shards on the stunned Benzites. Hold your fire, Collins yelled, holding the rifle aloft. I come in peace, but if you threaten me, I will defend myself. I have the power to reduce your cities to ashes. Balos stared slack-jawed at the smoking crater where the spire once stood. Never in all the history of the Benzite Dominion had he seen a handheld weapon cause such destruction. Whoever this Collins was, he wielded technology far beyond their own. The commander held up a hand, signalling his troops to stop. He would not risk his soldiers' lives in a fight they could not win. Lower your weapons, Belos ordered begrudgingly. The outsider will be given a chance to explain himself. Collins lowered his rifle slowly, letting out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. Thank you, Commander Belos. I am not your enemy. My name is Bobby Collins. I am a peaceful explorer from the planet Earth. But I have been in cryosleep for over 10,000 years, and I do not know what has happened to my world in that time. At the mention of Earth, Belos's eyes widened. 
Did you say Earth, the homeworld of the mythical humans? Collins blinked in surprise. Yes, I am a human from Earth. You know of my species? Every Benzite hatchling grows up hearing the legends of the humans, an ancient race said to possess technology that dwarfed all others. Their planet was the crown jewel of the galaxy. Belos leaned in close. But then, thousands of years ago, they vanished without a trace, leaving behind only broken ruins and whispered myths. Most consider it a mere fairy tale. Yet, here you stand. A chill ran down Collins's spine. If the Benzites' legends were true, then the worst had come to pass. Earth, the only home he had ever known, was gone. Swallowing hard, he met Belos's gaze. Commander, I am living proof that the legends are true. Humanity did exist, and I may be the last of my kind. Please, I need your help to find out what happened to my people. For a long moment, Belos said nothing, his expression unreadable. Finally, he clicked his mandibles decisively. Human Collins, your arrival is a portent of great change for the Benzite Dominion. I cannot make this decision alone. You must come with me to the High Council so they can hear your story. The future of both our races may depend on it. As Commander Belos led Collins out of the crash site, the human couldn't help but gape at the alien world around him. Towering skyscrapers of gleaming metal and glass spiralled into the sky, their surfaces adorned with pulsing holographic displays. Sleek, anti-gravity vehicles zipped through the air, weaving between the spires with precision. Collins stumbled as Belos shoved him into a waiting transport. The commander barked orders to the pilot, and the craft shot forward, merging into the flow of traffic. Collins pressed his face to the window, drinking in the sights of the Benzite capital. It was like something out of a science fiction novel, a city that put even the most advanced human metropolises to shame. The transport docked at a massive structure that Collins assumed was the High Council Chambers, Belos marched him inside, past guards armed with crackling energy weapons. They entered a cavernous room where a group of elderly Benzites sat on a raised dais, their blue skin wrinkled and their eyes sharp. High Councillors, I bring before you the human Collins who claims to be a survivor of the mythical Earth, Belos announced. The Benzites murmured amongst themselves, some with awe, others with suspicion. The one in the centre, an ancient-looking Benzite with a staff, stood. I am High Councillor Zalthor. Human Collins, tell us of your origins and the fate of your species. Collins swallowed, his throat suddenly dry. I am an astronaut from Earth. My ship, the Odyssey, was humanity's first manned mission beyond our solar system. But something went wrong, and I was forced into cryosleep. When I woke up, ten thousand years had passed and I crashed here. Zalthor nodded slowly. And what of Earth? Collins shook his head. I don't know. Commander Belos said it was nothing but ruins now. Please, I need to find out what happened to my people. The humans were the first to achieve interstellar travel, Zalthor said. They had a profound impact on the early civilizations of the galaxy, but then they vanished, and we have long sought the truth behind their disappearance. Just as Zaltha was about to continue, a deafening blast rocked the chamber. Chunks of debris rained down from the ceiling as a group of heavily armed Benzites stormed in, led by a scarred warrior with a wild look in his eyes. Krath, Belos growled. What is the meaning of this? The rebel leader pointed a clawed finger at Collins. The human must die. His kind brought ruin to our civilization ages ago, and his presence here now is an omen of destruction. The council erupted into chaos, some siding with Krath, others calling for calm. Colin stood frozen as the fate of both humanity and the Benzites hung in the balance, the future resting on the knife's edge of this fateful moment. Colin stood before the High Council, his heart pounding as Krath's rebels poured into the chambers. Their energy weapons were leveled at him, humming with deadly intent. Counselors, please, Collins said, holding up his hands. Let me try to reason with them. Zalthor hesitated, then nodded. Very well, Collins, but be cautious. Collins stepped forward, unholstering his rifle and setting it on the ground. Krath, I mean you no harm. 
I'm not here to deceive or destroy you. He tapped his translator, the device whirring to life. Can we talk, diplomat, you, me? Kreth snarled, the translator's garbled benzite only stoking his rage. More human lies, you twist our words. No, wait. Collins reached for the translator, but Krath flared his nostrils. Attack! the warlord roared. Kill the human! Say a barrage of energy blasts ripped through the air. Collins dove behind a pillar as molten stone sprayed overhead. So much for diplomacy. He snatched up his rifle and squeezed off a volley of plasma bolts, dropping two rebels in flashes of fire. But more surged forward, forcing him to duck and weave through the chamber. Jay's shot scorched Colin's shoulder and he hissed in pain. There were too many of them. He'd be overrun in seconds. Suddenly the doors blasted open and Belos charged in with a platoon of soldiers. The commander unleashed a hail of energy blasts, scattering the rebels. Collins, flank left, Belos shouted. The human nodded and sprinted along the wall, picking off rebels with precise shots. Belos' troops pressed from the right, and together they trapped Krath's forces in a punishing crossfire. Collins saw Krath making a break for the exit. He couldn't let him escape. Vaulting over a shattered statue, Collins sprinted after the warlord, plasma bolts sizzling past his head. He caught up to Krath in the antechamber and lunged, tackling him to the ground. They struggled hand to hand, benzite claws raking Collins' skin as he pummeled Krath with his fists. Healed, Collins yelled, pinning Krath in a chokehold. The warlord only thrashed harder, spittle flying from his teeth. Collins squeezed, bones creaking beneath his arm, until finally Krath went limp. Breathing hard, Collins zip-tied the warlord's wrists and dragged him back into the council room. Belos stood among the bodies of fallen rebels, his armour singed but intact. The uprising is crushed, the commander said. Krath's followers are fleeing the city. Zalthor emerged from behind a force field, his robes tattered. You have saved us, Collins, Belos, we are in your debt. Collins shook his head. I just want answers, Counselor, about Earth, about what happened to my people. Zalthor bowed deeply. And you shall have them. Come, we have much to discuss. As Collins followed the Counselor deeper into the Citadel, he couldn't shake the feeling that his journey was only just beginning. Earth, the Benzites, the Rebellion, they were all connected somehow. And he wouldn't stop until he uncovered the truth, no matter how deep it took him into the stars. Collins and Balos pressed their advantage, energy blasts sizzling past as they drove Krath's rebels back. The scarred warlord snarled in fury, his forces dwindling with each precise shot from Collins' rifle. Surrender, Krath! Collins shouted over the din of battle. It's over! But Krath's eyes gleamed with manic defiance. He reached into his armor and pulled out a pulsing orb, tendrils of energy snaking across its surface. If I cannot have victory, I will have vengeance. Krath thumbed a switch on the orb and it began to whine ominously. Join your fallen race in oblivion, human. Time seemed to slow as Collins realized the orb was a bomb, primed to vaporize the council chambers and everyone inside. He lunged at Krath, tackling him to the ground as the warlord tried to hurl the device. They grappled furiously, Collins straining to pry the bomb from Krath's grip. Claws raked his face, drawing blood. Collins smashed his forehead into Krath's nose, feeling cartilage crunch. The warlord howled and his hold weakened. With a final wrenching effort, Collins seized the bomb and hurled it through a window seconds before it detonated. The blast shook the building, showering them with pulverized glass. Krath used the distraction to slash his talons across Collins' stomach. Searing agony ripped through Collins and he fell back, clutching the ragged wounds. Krath staggered to his feet, murder in his eyes, but Belos was there, driving the butt of his rifle into the warlord's head with a sickening crack. Krath crumpled and didn't get up again. Belos rushed to Colin's side, pressing his hands against the gushing lacerations. Zalthor and the other counsellors gathered around, their faces grave. Medic, Belos shouted. We need a medic now. But Collins could feel his lifeblood pumping out between his fingers, could taste copper on his tongue. 
He coughed and red speckled his lips. No, he said weakly, it's too late for me. Oh, you can't die, Collins, Belos growled. My people need you. We've only just begun to unravel the mystery of your race. Collins shook his head, wincing at the effort. You don't need me, Commander. You have everything you need right here. He looked at the counselors, his vision starting to blur. I came here hoping I could go home, but my real mission was to reach out to the stars, to find others like us, and learn from them. Collins coughed again, his breath rattling in his punctured lungs. My people dreamed of a universe full of wonders and friends we hadn't met yet. Don't let our mistakes become yours. Put aside war and anger. Embrace each other. Zalthor knelt down, clasping Collins' hand. Your wisdom and courage will not be forgotten, Bobby Collins of Earth. We will honour your memory and your wish for a better future. Collins smiled, a trickle of blood running from the corner of his mouth. I'm glad my journey ends here more with you. The future is in good hands. His eyes slid closed and he exhaled one last time, the ghost of his final smile still on his lips. Belos bowed his head grief etched in the lines of his face. Zalthor and the others murmured prayers in their native tongue, ancient words of sorrow and gratitude. In the days that followed, the Benzites mourned the fallen human who had become an unlikely hero and friend. They buried him with the highest honors, erecting a monument to mark his sacrifice. And as the years flowed by like water, as generations were born and died under alien suns, the legend of Bobby Collins only grew. The last human to walk among the stars, the explorer who gave his life to unite a fractured galaxy. Benzite parents would tell their hatchlings of his adventures, his indomitable spirit in the face of impossible odds, and the children would look up at the night sky, wondering if they too could find the courage to reach across the cosmos and clasp hands with the unknown. The legacy of Earth lived on, carried in the hearts of a species reborn, guided by the starlight of Bobby Collins' eternal message of hope. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video, then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.